This reminds me of a joke. See, there were two guys locked in a lunatic asylum. And one night, one night they decided they didn't like that anymore. They decided to escape. So they made it up to the roof, and there, just across this narrow gap, they see rooftops stretching across town, stretching to freedom. Now the first guy, he jumps right across, no problem, but his friend, oh, no way, he's afraid of falling. So the first guy, he has an idea. He says, hey, I got this flashlight with me. I'll shine it across the gap between the buildings, and you can walk across the beam and join me. But the second guy said, what do you think I am, crazy? You just turn it off when I'm halfway across. We interrupt this program to bring you a special report. This is Cheap Seat Reviews. Hello, and thank you for listening to Cheap Seat Reviews, the podcast that explores the Hollywood film industry for the greater good. The greater good. Oh, that's pretty good. That's nice. Uh, thank you for listening. Thank yeah. you for joining us. Thank you for choosing us. Uh, we know that there yeah. are many other podcasts that you can choose from, and you chose... Many, many other ones. Many better ones. Many better produced. Yeah. Many, many... Many that many are others. actually produced. <laughs> 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 many, many well, fine shows. What are you saying? Uh, I'm saying... I don't know what I'm saying. <laughs> but we seriously... Try. We no, try. thank That's you for, for joining us in... 2021. This is the first episode of 2021. You can might even say this is the start of season number seven if we broke it down like that. Because yeah. we are entering the beginnings. We're not quite there yet on our seventh anniversary, but we have like uh, from the time that I'm recording this, we have about eight days from the time okay. that we posted our first episode. So nice. Yeah, it's kind of cool. It's exciting. I'm looking forward to it. And uh, well, I don't know what I'm looking forward to. I guess I'm just excited. I don't know. <laughs> it's not like I'm doing anything special. It'll just be another episode that we do, and we'll we'll have uh, we'll probably have a guest on. Yeah. Um, we'll have yeah. asset through through. We'll, <laughs> yeah, <so. exactly. laughs> Actually, we'll get a guest on, and then you know let them hopefully they can carry the show. There you go. I think that's probably. We'll, we'll put it on the shoulders of people. That just are supposed to be helping. Well, we're putting on the shoulders of people that are better than us, I think is what, what that we're, is trying, true. we're trying to say. And more clever and smarter, I think, is what we're trying to say. Ultimately, though, I, I don't know if the people that we, we would get on the show listened to the show, but this is our way of saying we love you and we want you to come back soon. This, yes. uh, yeah, this movie, we're doing a movie. And what is it? Well, it's episode 328. That's right, episode 328. We've done 327 of these already. It's time for the next. And tonight we're talking about The Killing Joke, uh, which is yeah. which is a, a thing. <laughs> you all right, Andrew? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. The Killing Joke. I'm Sean Allred, yeah. and joining me tonight is Andrew. You should always use the little door peephole thingy, Jimison. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is how it's going to be. This, this is, is how it's, how it's going to be, be all night. <laughs> <laughs> no. Hey, guys. Hey, man. Hey, Andrew. Good to see you. Nice to have you, bud. New Year. Uh, and Sam, all, uh, seems like an awful waste of money just to try to psychologically break some one vector. Yeah, that is true. <laughs> but just so you know, yeah. Sean, knock, knock. Oh. Oh, who's there? Bang! Bang who? I, that that was me shooting you in the in the stomach. Oh, uh, when I knocked on your door. Oh, so, yeah. Bang! You're paralyzed. Yeah. Maybe is that the punchline? There you line? go. I love how he he knew that she was paralyzed. Like it, it was like, oh yeah, okay. She, you know, well, he's done it so fine. many times. He knows. Apparently. Yeah, he's so yeah. he's so good at at shooting people in the gut to know that the bullet's going to break their spine and they'll be paralyzed, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. so yeah, this is 2016's 
the the Killing Joke. This is a a, a I guess it's a it's technically a feature. It's an hour and sixteen minutes. Mm-hmm. Um, it's an it's an adaptation adaptation is the way you would pronounce that. Um, from an Alan Moore comic, and like many Alan Moore comics, Alan Moore hates his adaptations, all adaptations of his work, and therefore yep. has not seen it, and is living in a cave somewhere right now, being grumpy. <laughs> uh, really? And I, I guess um, our, our biggest question for this one is going to be, is that warranted? I don't, I don't know. Um, right? Yeah, yeah, Andrew, you seem surprised. Yeah, he's very vocal about hating V for Vendetta and hating the Watchmen and hating... Watchmen, yeah. Um, well, I, I don't disagree with those two. So I could see where he's going. <laughs> well, I mean, V yeah. for Vendetta, I think, is a good movie. And I think that, you know, I know people have issue with The Watchmen, but I think it's still a pretty good piece yeah. of entertainment. But um, but he's just a curmudgeon. He's just like, he he would he has nothing to do with the new Watchmen, he's, from which what I've yeah, been he's, told is really good. He's cranky. He is. Yeah, the, the HBO is amazing. Yeah. yeah. It, if those of us who have seen the the movie and have read the comic book. It's an amazing, ma- I think it's an amazing extension of that comic book. Cool. Or mm. graphic novel. Extending the maybe? story. Yeah. Graphic novel. Sorry. Yeah. I don't, I don't want to offend the nerds out there. I think, well, we're, we're long past that. At oh, this that's point. true. Yeah. We kind <laughs> of are. Um, so yeah, so this movie is just, it's okay. So this movie is weird for me. For some reason I have, I, I have misremembered this movie entirely. So I'd never seen it and didn't really know much about it other than the iconic poster for it. The the poster okay. is very it, it it's just it feels like it's a poster that's been around for thirty years. Yeah. And, and for some reason when this movie yeah. started, I had forgotten that I didn't I just didn't remember that this was new. I was conflating it maybe with Mask of the Phantasm, which was like ninety three or something. Mm-hmm. I totally confused it with the storyline where Robin is killed. Yeah, I did too. Yeah. Right? I thought this was the Robin killed story. Yeah, I did too. It's called The Killing Joke. I, I assumed yeah. that, that the Joker is going to kill someone. Yeah. In that... And I was surprised when it wasn't that, that story. Yeah, it, it, not at mm-hmm. all. And... Yeah. And so I was very surprised. And also I was a, a little let down... <laughs> I mean, not that I want more <laughs> violence in my Batman, but I was a little let down that there's no, I don't know what you want to call it, emotional... Arc? Uh, yeah, I don't know, maybe, what am I trying to say? There's no, like, wall that you have to hit. You know, like, there's there's, there's no... I don't know. Yeah. I'm with you. Yeah, and then, What do you mean? There's, there's, like, no peak in the story, or, like... Yeah, I guess the movie for, just feels, like, kind of anticlimactic. Yes. It okay. Just, I see what you're saying. It just fizzles out. It just stops. There's no real, I don't want to say stakes, but like when the commissioner is getting basically tortured, you expect more to come out of that, right? You expect more to come out of the relationship between Batgirl and, and Batman and what happens to her. And you expect Batman to hit the wall at some point when, you know, this, this Batgirl gets paralyzed. You know, and, I, yeah. Oh, sorry. No, no, no. I, I, I was just going to say, I know we're going to get into this, but I really feel like that this is uh, the first act. And I've not read the uh, graphic novel, but I feel like the first act where we're getting to know the story of Barbara Gordon and Batgirl and how she has this relationship with Batman, mm-hmm. I feel like that is completely. Well, not completely useless, but I feel like the the movie could have happened without that. Yeah. Well, the, 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 hopping, story, the, the hopping man the of story, this movie is their well, relationship. Yeah. And this the, this movie is really about Joker. Yeah. You know, this is the movie with Joaquin Phoenix, but it's mistakenly or... And appropriately told through the eyes of Batgirl. And I think that's what 
has made me not appreciate it. And I think maybe that's what, uh, uh, what's his face? Well, no, Alan so I, need to, I need to stop this line of thought for just now before the, the other people that do listen to the show that have read the materials, they're, they're yelling in their phones. So the killing joke, the story, basically, if you take this movie and break it into, uh, it's not a half, but if you break it into pieces, um, basically, and everything from the Barbara Gordon story, basically everything up in, until she quits, that is mm-hmm. what you would consider a prelogue, right? And yeah. then okay. once that, once she's done and out of the picture, then the movie starts. The Killing Joke, the graphic novel starts. None of the stuff with her and Batgirl is in the Killing Joke graphic novel. It's not there. The only yeah, reason I, I can, why I could tell that just by watching it. Yeah, because it feels it feels like a we're watching a prequel, and then the, the we had to get backstory before. And the reason why they did it is one to they wanted to make it a feature, and so they needed to make it longer. And mm-hmm. also, they wanted you to have some emotional uh, an emotional response when she gets shot, and so that we care that she's now paralyzed because we've been watching her fight crime as Batgirl, and then have this sexual relationship with Batman. Weird. Yeah, it was super weird. <laughs> um, yeah. So that's why it's, that's why it feels like it's two movies because it is. It's it's literally two movies that they kind of. It's like an episode. You know this this is a twenty minute episode before the hour movie. Kind of okay. And it's kind of what it is. So. Well, and it's only what an hour and sixteen minutes. Yeah. If I remember right, so it, it's a stretched episode. Those yeah. sixteen minutes it's are two, filler. It's two episodes that were. To be continued, right? <laughs> yeah, and that's a good yeah. way to look at it. It's it's two. Yeah. Well, it's not even really two twenty-two because most episodes that are half-hour episodes are twenty-two minutes. So I mean, like these are true like two thirty-plus minute long, forty-plus minute long episodes. Um, yeah. But I, I'm still kind of choosing to think of it as there was a twenty-two minute and then an hour. Yeah. yeah. Well, and that's what I meant that this is really the Joker story. Mm-hmm. Like the, the killing joke is I think when we watch movies, especially movies like this, we, we see a superhero and, and that's what we want to uh, immediately make the movie about Batman or immediately make it about Superman or whoever the hero is. But what Disney has done lately in movies like Maleficent or uh, what they've done with the Walking Phoenix Joker movie Right, we have these movies that are just featuring and just the story of this the person that we've known, yeah. this character that we've known, but we don't really know that, um, that much about them. Yeah. Well, yeah, I agree. And yeah. but my problem with this was that I don't even, I don't think I really even liked the the Joker story in this, where I was, I don't want to say bored, but it 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 didn't intrigue me. Right. It, it, yeah. I didn't care. And I don't know if that's because of the Joaquin Phoenix movie, because I love that movie, or if it's because this movie wasn't able to tell the story. Um, I just didn't think there was enough character development, maybe, uh, to warrant, um, I don't know, to warrant this, that for the Joker in this movie. Yeah. I think they could have taken those first 20 minutes with the, Barbara Gordon portion of their story or the prologue, if you will, and just changed it to make it 20 more minutes about his past and about his life or whatever. And I think that might've made it more interesting. Well, I I think I I hear what you're saying. They might've been, they would have had to add content to the Alan Moore graphic novel. So yeah, maybe they didn't want to do that. Maybe they wanted to try to stay true to it, but but here's that. the thing. Did you feel sad at all when he found out his wife was dying? No. Oh, that when, she, when she died in the fire? When died in the oh, car no. wreck or whatever it was. No, right? I didn't feel... Did s- you? No, but I didn't. Like, mainly because the actor or the character didn't feel all that sad either. No. Yeah. I don't know. I know it's hard to... You know, you can only display so much emotion on a two-dimensional cartoon. But, it, it, you know, like... It didn't seem like he reacted appropriately. It just it, felt, it almost seemed like you know, oh, the police just told me someone ran over my dog. You know, like it didn't. Yeah, it didn't feel like his wife had died. Like his world me. should be 
just just shattered. Yeah, it's his wife and unborn child. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it just it seemed like I don't know. I mean, to to the point that even later on, when he's being forced to to sneak into the factory, which I still don't really understand why he had to be costumed up, but the other guys were just walking around. That didn't really make sense. But he's making yeah. jokes. He's like, "Oh, this bucket smells weird." Like, really? Are we? Are we? Have you? Uh, emo- I'm saying, have you already moved past the death of your wife and kid? It just seemed. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It, seemed- it didn't seem genuine. And I'm not blaming yep. Mark Hamill. Mark Hamill's great as the Joker. Yes, he oh, is. Oh, yeah. He's really good. I'm glad that they were able to get him and uh, Kevin Conroy. Yeah. Uh, because yeah. the for me, there was a little bit of a nostalgia. Because I grew up with the Batman animated series. Which, oh, me too. Me too. Which right? was yeah. fantastic. And still, I think the reason that I... Uh, well, up until the MCU, really loved DC a lot more than I cared anything about. Marvel. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. Yeah, and and well, yeah, what were you going to say, Sean? No, I was just going to simply say we're we're 15 minutes into the show and none of us have done any of our five word reviews which um we we do have to do uh we or we we can do, I should say. Um but the one last thing I'll say before we do some five word reviews is is back to I guess expectations for the movie. Mm-hmm. And that was one. It is a rated R movie. Now it's rated R for some of the violence because you see guys get killed, and there's some blood, mm-hmm. and there I are get shot through the head. It's amazing. Yeah, a couple people get shot through the noggin. There is a um, implied rape scene. There mm-hmm. is which I did not ever think Joker would do rapey stuff. That just never. Never thought that that was something that he would do. Mm-hmm. Um, and then there's some other kind of, kind of implied date rape stuff, like when the the guy that the bat girl is fighting, which for some reason I don't remember his conclusion to the story. It's like it was like they were building this this guy up to be the next crime boss, and then he just. He just just stopped. Did, did he and get, see, I liked he, his story. I thought he was at least interesting. Yeah, I, I and agree. Very Definitely. tropey. Don't get me wrong. Very, very tropey. Yeah. But I at least enjoyed that part of the story. Did he get arrested or something? Like I don't remember what happened to him. I honestly don't remember what happened to him. No, she she beat the hell out of him. She beat him up, and, and he then, was arrested. And yeah. He was yeah, he was arrested. arrested. And that's it. He's just he's just out of the story. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I don't remember either. It just it's, huh. it's too much. Okay, that's fine. Whatever. It's because that wasn't like. I know That's it's not, not memorable. You yeah, know, just well, put this guy in prison. I finished the movie four <laughs> hours ago, and I can't remember what happened. <laughs> <laughs> almost a hopping man. Really. Yeah, almost. Well, I wrote that because I couldn't remember what happened to him. I honestly wrote, "Is he the hopping yeah. man?" Because I don't remember what happened to him. Um. Huh. So anyway, so Sam, what's your what's your five word review? Oh sure, yeah. Okay, let me pull it up here. I only have one. Um, I don't know if I'm uncreative tonight or not. Is but basically. Nitty gritty road to nowhere. All right. And <laughs> for me, this movie, it's not that I was bored because it was like Andrew said, it was kind of a nostalgia, right? Seeing the, the same type of animation I grew up with. I love that Batman. I love that Joker. I just, there wasn't really a detective story in this at all. In terms of Batman, there wasn't any, didn't feel like the stakes were very high to me. It, it I didn't connect with any of the characters. And I just, it was a blah movie. It was very bland to me. Um, other than the fact that it was a rated R movie when I've seen a bunch of, um, of uh, you know, my, my growing up was obviously not a rated R Batman. So um, I don't know. I just, I, I felt, it wasn't disappointing because it wasn't disappointing. It was just more along the lines of, I didn't feel anything. It was just kind of a blah movie to me. Yeah, it was almost like, you know, we're just passing the time while watching something that I kind of used to watch as a kid. Right? Yes. <laughs> I don't you think know, it told it, us anything new. No. Right? And certainly um, nothing that I cared to, you know, pick up on the characters. Other than the fact that maybe there was a relationship with Batman and, and uh, Batgirl. Yeah. Because that... 
like. <laughs> but then I felt kind of icky because then I'm like, wait a second. That means, you know, how old is she? Right? Is, <laughs> I, I guess she's a consenting adult, right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. to get your crime fighting license, you have to be a certain age. Okay. So then, then there is that at least. Yeah, well, yeah. I mean, I, I thought that too. I, I, I was the same thing. When, as soon as she starts kissing on him, I was expecting Batman to be like, "Okay, hang, the... hang in there. Yeah. Like we're, we're partners, or you're my friend's daughter, or something." But no, he was like, "No, yeah. okay, no, let's, let's just go for it on the roof." Yeah, yeah I, I did. Let me let me show you how to remove him. the cod piece here. <laughs> I did kind of expect him to resist a little bit more. Yeah. Yeah. Which also, know. okay, this is just this is the dumb stuff I pick up. But when you when you draw something, everything you draw you have to be intentional about, right? You don't. It's not like in a in a movie, a regular movie, if something gets left in the background, just like oh whatever, it was an accident, you know. So she's on top of him, right? And she pulls off her her shirt, and all I could think of was like, I thought that was supposed to be armor. She pulls it off like it's a t shirt, mm-hmm. and then she's wearing a bra. Like just a yeah, regular well, bra, like sports bra. It wasn't a sports bra. It looked like a regular <laughs> lace bra. It's like really you couldn't even. Well, it was definitely Hanes. It wasn't Victoria's Secret. Yeah, well, you know, but still, like you couldn't be bothered to put on a sports bra to go fight crime. <laughs> I, just, I just, I thought it was weird. I just, I mean, again, if you're going to show me that you're doing it on purpose, and I don't know, and I know, uh, I don't know. The other thing I mentioned, I forgot to mention before, I actually. Queued, uh, queued up your uh, five word review, Sam, but about uh-huh. expectations is again the movie poster is the Joker with this camera. I thought yeah. that I thought that was going to be a theme. Yeah. The only time we see the camera is when he's taking pictures of Barbara Gordon. Yeah. Well, we do see it around his neck when he's dressed as the uh, vacationer when he comes to the door. Right, that's what I'm saying. He he has it and yeah. he takes pictures of Barbara Gordon after he shot her just to torment her dad later in the, you know, the PowerPoint screen of hell that he has to go through. But again, a lot of work for what the heck. Yeah. Right? I mean, you know how many, I'm how thinking long to myself, would... all those TVs hung, you know, and not it, just to hang them. They have to be networked together because they all show the mm-hmm. same image. There's a lot of like video hub going on. I know my yeah. wife is actually, unfortunately sitting in the room with me as I record tonight. So she's hearing all the bad and dumb things that I say, and I know she's rolling her eyes because I do <laughs> AV for a living, and all I could think of is, that would take a lot of time to hang all those TVs and to <laughs> network them together. Like, that's not an easy task. It's like, is his carnival cronies, are they the ones setting up the AV team, or did he hire an AV team and then kill them like he did the owner guy? Um, so weird. I know. It's just the dumb things I think about. It's, I know it's stupid. Andrew, what's your five-word review? Well, mine's not very creative. It people don't run that way. <laughs> That's my favorite review. That, I don't know if it bothered you at all, but I, and maybe it was the same way in the the animated version that I watched as a kid, but it really bothered me to watch them run. Yeah, <laughs> I've seen animated movies and I've seen them make animated gar- uh, characters run. This looked terrible. Oh, uh, I agree. <laughs> and it took me out of it, you know, because I was focused on how bad the running looked and not, not the action that was That's supposed funny. to be happening. I never even thought about it. I, yeah. I honestly I mean, can't it, even picture it. It was what almost they like they like. were. If you've ever seen, like, someone play, um, oh, what's that sport? Uh, Soccer. On basketball. the ice. No, it's ice the. Hockey. Uh, hockey. No. Were there. Oh, uh, they're curling. Bucks. Curling, yes, thanks. Yeah. If it, it looks like the guy just sweeping the floor as they're doing curling, not not the one behind the puck, but the guy just sweeping. Yeah. <laughs> He's just yeah. kind of scooting down. It looks like someone's scooting. I don't know. It just bothered me. <laughs> but the the whole movie, like I said, I I wanted to like it because of what I've known growing up, but I didn't like it at all, yeah. and yeah. especially the end. And it wasn't that I didn't get the ending. It's just that I thought it was a bad ending. Well, it did, Do, that's not Batman's character. No. Right? What? It's Do, not. I mean, there, it wasn't earned. It was almost or, like I expected them to now do a buddy cop movie together. Well, yeah. so here's the thing. There's 
so there's a theory, and then there's so Alan Moore, the way he wrote it in the book is that I don't know if the joke is in there. I don't know, but he wrote it that Batman arrests the Joker by the book, like Gordon wants him to, to prove that whatever. But because in this movie, and I have a clip of it in a little bit, in this movie when Batman's laughing at the joke, and then we stop hearing the Joker laugh, and only Batman is laughing. And the last thing we see as the camera pans out is the Batman putting his hands on the Joker's shoulders, is that there are people that think that Batman kills him, that he snaps his neck. And that's why Batman is still laughing, laughing and the Joker's huh. not. But the, well, if we had have seen that, I would appreciate it. Well, the, the director <laughs> said... I didn't, I didn't even... Get, I didn't get... Not even I, an I inch get that of either. that. Well, yeah. and... And I did when I was watching it because when it when the pan again the camera pans down and I noticed the Joker stopped laughing but Batman doesn't. I was listening for an audio cue of something, you know, yeah, like yeah. A, like a body hitting the ground or a snap neck kind of a thing, you know, like you know, like some celery breaking or something. I was waiting for the sound and I didn't get it, so that made me think. Well, and they had that he had he had that whole conversation too about you know in the jail cell. Well, it's a fake Joker about who's going to kill kill who first. Yeah. I mean, right. they're going to kill you or they're going to kill me. Yeah. yeah. And I thought, honestly, what was going on was that, that, that Batman, honestly, that he, had, he finally broke. That he realized in the moment that, you know, because he offers him help. And when the Joker's like, nah, you can't help me. I'm, I'm, I'm too far gone or whatever. Then that's when I thought that Batman's like, okay, then I have to end you before you do kill someone else. Mm-hmm. And, yeah, and that makes sense. And yeah. the thing that bothers me about that is it's not in his character. No. Nope. But, like you said, maybe he finally broke. But, like, that's to your point, specifically to your point, it's that everything that Batman is is about he has the one rule. He will break every constitutional rule out there except thou shalt not kill. So yeah. the fact that the filmmaker left it up to us as the audience is kind of annoying. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, this isn't a spinning top, right? This is. Yeah, this it's is not like the spinning. Not top. even a spinning top. This is just. Yeah, I don't know how. How would you? Right, because if because if the spinning top meant that if the top falls over, he goes and murders his children, like then you would be yeah. concerned about if the top falls, you know, because it would be yeah. very out of character. I mean, you're right. We're taking the one thing that he's known for, even though you know he. He sort of kills Ra's al Ghul and Batman Begins, but you know whatever. Um, mm. <clears throat> I don't. I'm not going to kill you. I just don't have to save you. Well, I mean, yeah, gravity's going to kill him. Yeah, sure, but anyway. Um, so my five word review was simply better than Dark Knight Rises. No, I don't. Mm. I can't stand no. that movie so much. I hate that movie so bad. Yeah, I, I disagree with you on that one, buddy. That's, and that's fine, but I, I hate that movie so much. I mean, the Val Kilmer Batman I like better than Dark Knight Rises. Really? Oh, God, yeah. You must really hate that movie. I man. really do. The Dark, <laughs> At least Batman Forever is stupid fun. With Jim Carrey yeah. is over the top. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's some, there's some things there to like, but I, I like nothing about Dark Knight Rises. Nothing. Well, yeah, pretty much nothing. So, wow. Yeah. What? You were born in the dark. I was born. Yeah. No. I mean, like, he's a meme. He's a car. He's a car. He's a, I don't know. He's, I mean, I know they're all cartoon characters, but it just sucks. Anyway. Um, a few of my notes that I wrote down. Favorite things. Um, about this movie specifically were, let's see. Did not see the sexy, sexy part happening. Uh, oh, uh, Batman brings coffee. <laughs> I thought that was weird. Like, <laughs> because it's in a to-go cup. He, he does DoorDash uh, on the side. Yeah, I'm saying, <laughs> did he pull up in the Batmobile? And, well, I guess this Batmobile, he, his, his, his has already gotten torched, right? Oh, no, no, the new one hadn't been blown up yet. So, yeah, he, he pulls up in the Batmobile. Which, by the way, Andrew, that, that was for you, right? Like, you, yeah, you said you was. had the nostalgia when the first one yep. gets blown up, the one he drives second is from the animated series. Yeah. I caught it. Yeah. That's, that, that, yeah. that was pretty cool. I did, I did too. Um, I watched it probably not as much as you did, but I did watch it when I was a kid. Yeah. 
I know, Sam, you're already like 28 when that cartoon was coming on. Shut up. <laughs> um, but yeah, I just thought it was funny that he like he stopped to get her coffee. And then she didn't drink it. What a like a jerk. She just leaves it on the on the roof. Um, let's see. I always thought the uniforms. Oh yeah, she. I mentioned that. I didn't realize there was going to be so much teen angst in a Batman movie. Uh, what a weird game of solitaire. I wrote. I just, yeah, I, I tried to figure out the rules. In fact, I rewound it to try to figure out what he was doing, <laughs> and I couldn't figure it out. Well, obviously, because wow. that, that guy, the, obviously not the Joker, so I think they probably he put just, a seven on, or he put an ace on a seven, and I'm like, what the heck is going on here? Yeah, I think they just told him to act weird. Well, well they drew I, him weird is what they would do, right? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> then I wrote, how does anyone not know who the Joker is? You know, like he's talking to this <laughs> business guy, and this guy's going to sell him the park. How do you not immediately know who that guy is? I don't understand it. I just I agree. I mean, I know that, like, again, I don't live in Gotham. I live in Charlotte, but in a, I know there, there are plenty of bad guys here that I don't recognize. But uh, it feels like if you live in a world where there's a guy dressed as a bat chasing a dude that's all white with green hair who escapes from prison, what feels like every other week, you would know who he is. It just <laughs> seemed weird. Uh, I did also write this movie has kind of a rapey tone. This, I wrote that before that the Joker actually does sexually assault her. I just hmm. does he? I just it's I don't written, know. it's in the trivia I, that he does. Yeah. Oh wow. It's the, you see him unbutton her blouse or her shirt, so it's it, there's supposed to be an impl- implication that he rapes her. Yeah, but I didn't. I mean. Until the okay. pictures of, of Jim Gordon going through the, the fun house, I did not think that's where that was going. Yeah. Well, even then, I thought, well, it's the Joker. Maybe he just took pictures of her to make him think that he did that. Mm. So, yeah, I, I mean, know. even a rated R cartoon is only going to go so far to, to, to show us something. But according to the trivia, it's, that's what happened. So, But yeah. again, you know... I didn't, this is going to sound really insensitive of me. I didn't feel like her character was messed up enough from what happened to her. Oh, certainly, certainly yeah. she was distraught, right? Yeah. And, and was having trouble with it or whatever. But I just did not, I didn't feel anything from the, the ordeal, which it was, if that happened, you know, that, Especially with the mid credit scene, you know, that it just didn't seem like there was a payoff at all. Yeah. Which I, um, I had to ask. I wrote down in my notes, so who is she now? Because I don't know that 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 logo. Yeah. I'm, I have no I'm idea. asking Andrew because you're I don't have Corny here to ask these questions. What what logo are you talking about? So there's, there's, this is like a green Medusa brain logo or something. Yeah. Did did I miss something? There's a mid credit mid-cre- scene. Yeah. Oh, I didn't see that. Yeah, there's a mid credit scene where it shows her in a wheelchair. Oh. Uh, rolling into no, like I completely her... missed it. I wrote it. I think it's. I have it in the trivia here, but I can't remember. Uh, I don't have it. Anyway, it's not. Important. See, that's how much I didn't like the movie. I didn't even care to watch the credits <laughs> or to check to see if there was a mid credit scene. Yeah, it's like some kind of great. She becomes something else. It's in the comics that she be, she turns into something else. It, it has another name. I didn't know what it was, so that's why I just figured I'd ask you. So it's whatever She's, the next. She doesn't become the the person that's in the Flash. I mean the uh, Green Arrow. Well, uh, see, that's that's kind of the character ish that it seems to me, but I don't. I don't think so, no. Because doesn't that happen in a character with uh, Green Arrow? Yeah, but what's her in name? The, um, it, uh, yeah. Not Emily, but the blonde. She turns into Oracle is what she becomes. Oracle. Oracle. That's, that's yeah. right. I think I've heard Corny mention that, by the way. Yeah. Yeah. Let's see. I'm just going to... No, whatever. Apparently that's in the Birds of Prey, the, the series that came out in like 02. Something. I, I don't know. I did not. I was in college at that time. I don't know. Yeah, I, I don't know either. Why do you even had a girlfriend? So might have. I kind of. Oh, they even had a yeah. The out. Birds of Prey DC comic, or the, they actually had a, an actress. 
I don't know who that actress is. Teo Okamoto. She played the. She played her. That's cool. Um. Yeah. Anyway, there you go. So I didn't know who it was, and now I do. Let's see. I doubt the commissioner would go anywhere without extra protection. That seemed really strange. I just. Well, I don't know about that. Unless, well, I mean, unless, I mean, you do have a madman on the loose, right? That yeah, yeah. I mean, when you, you, but yeah, like. It, the the commissioner of New York police probably is able to get into his car and just go home at night, but mm-hmm. but I mean we live in, you live in the world of supervillains where they're omniscient, and <laughs> you know like they, as soon as they they can break mm-hmm. out of jail without anyone knowing, and and then go and somehow he's able to have money, right? For some reason I thought that. When Paris went to jail, for some reason, all the money that he now has because of his dad's fortune, I thought the Joker was somehow going to get that money. Because when the yeah. Joker says, I'm not going to have to worry about money, or money is no option, or something like that, I thought, oh, I didn't know the Joker was loaded. I didn't know that was... I just I was confused by that. And maybe that meant that he just was just going to steal the theme park from that guy. But... I don't know. Anyway, but you still had to have money to buy all those TVs. And, but then he was able to just recruit these carny folk to come in and fight for him. Uh, I don't know. It's just, <laughs> I don't know. I'm just saying, like, it's, in a world where bad guys are omniscient, yeah, it, it feels like you should always have a couple of cops just kind of, you know, hey, you, you, got, you guys, you drew the short straw. Tonight you get to hang out with me and my daughter. You know what I'm saying? Like, I just, whatever. I know. It's, it's, a, it's a cartoon. It's a comic. I get it. But whatever. It's fine. Uh, let's see. Uh, yeah, that's kind of all my, no- that's all my notes. Um, I do have a few clips. If you guys are ready for those. <coughs> let's do some clippy clips. So I think this, I don't know if this is a trope. I guess it's a trope. But this. This thing needs to go away with the um, Wilhelm scream, all right? We need to stop seeing this in movies where we're saying it in um, in earnest. You know what I'm saying? Like, not as a mm-hmm. joke. So, here we go. Bottom line, you're going to give me my money back, nephew, every cent. Otherwise, you're going to become a very distant relative very soon. Capiche? I can't stand it when people say capiche. No, no one says that. Really? Oh, Actually, my first year teaching, I said that in front of the band. Uh, and the assistant principal was there observing me. And he afterwards said, I thought that was the funniest class I'd ever seen. And you said the <laughs> word capiche. And I was like, I did? <laughs> I didn't even know I had said it. Right, but you said it as a joke. If you were doing it as a joke, that's fine. But like... No one has ever threatened someone else other than God, like the Godfather movies, right? Like no one ever, because that's where that's from, right? Like someone, again, I've still not seen the Godfathers, I know. But yeah. there's some gangster movie where someone says capiche to somebody and that's just stuck. Mm-hmm. And so anytime you yeah. have a, a gangster... It's bad writing. It, it is, is bad, bad writing. writing. It is. I mean, honestly, the only one that's got good writing is, is the Joker, Mark Hamill's character. And who knows if he's improving some of that? He might have been. I don't know. Some of it was really good. His his yeah. his dialogue was really good. Batman just growls the whole time, and Barbara wow. Gordon is just teen angst. And I don't know. I mean, okay. Anyway, number two. Three years ago was that dentist convention, the one where a handful of conventioneers never returned home, just went missing, emptied out their bank accounts, and disappeared. I think we're standing in the mouth of that. Interesting choice of words, huh? So I wasn't, I was confused by what that was telling us. Like those four people that were in that place with the crazy faces on, was that, like, were they lured there by the Joker? Did he kill them there? I don't, I don't understand. No, I don't know. I, you know, was it, you know, there was also that, 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 Smiling body at the carnival too, wasn't there? 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm making some so. kind of like I'm, I'm assuming the Joker has some kind of serum, like it's his chemical system or whatever, that kills you and makes you do the face thing, which I'm yeah I'm fine with. They are they established that in the first Batman movie. I'm okay with that. But like, was though were those four people? Is that how he has money? It's because they emptied their bank accounts and gave it to him. And he did it, and it was three years ago. So I guess this was before he was caught. You know. One of the many times I don't know. Um, it's so weird. It and, just it didn't. Again, it just feels like there's they just threw something at a wall to see if it would stick, and this yeah. was something that stuck. Uh, yeah, I just I'm not sure I'm supposed to understand the the how it fits into the puzzle. Yeah. Other than just to, again to show more evidence that the Joker's insane. Yeah. Um, all right, here we go. But it wasn't like a series of clues. It, it was not, it just, again, it didn't fit a good storyline. It just was not a good story. It was, it was almost like they said, come on, let's go and make a rated R Batman and be done with it. Well, again, and I know there's a couple of people that are listening. I know Alan specifically who, who commented on Facebook about, you know, the source material is really good. It'll help. It'll help with the movie. We're not always privy to that. You know, we've, we try to yeah, review, so, we try to review the movie as the movie as a standalone thing, you know, especially when we review a movie that's based on a book, even though I know we always bring in parts of the book that we've read to say this part's a little different or whatever. We've done that for, you know, I did it for Stardust and we've done it for other Well, other we did it stuff. for uh Batman v Superman when we were talking about the Frank Miller Batman. Yeah. Yeah. And and I'm guilty of that. You know, I've defended that movie a lot, but I think it was because I knew the Frank Miller Batman and knew the source material. So maybe maybe you guys were right after all. No, well <laughs> I mean that's true. We were right. It's still a bad movie. But no, my no, point was is that is that yeah. we we are going to do that when we have the ability to ability to, but we always try we might not always succeed, but I think we always try to to review the movie based on what the movie gave us. Yeah. And yeah. in this case, I I think the movie just kind of failed a little bit. I was I was it was it was just a little lackluster. And I know there's a lot of cool like um what's the word? Gosh. Not a simile, metaphor. There's metaphors. Like when they're in the fun house at the end, and when they have the fight in the kitchen, that's an exact replica of his kitchen, the Joker's kitchen, but it's upside mm. down to simulate that his world has turned upside down. Mm. You know, I mean, they're and, and they're quite literally hitting Batman over the head with the metaphor. And and I I always seem to have a hard time with the Joker ever getting the edge on Batman in a fist fight. It just doesn't seem like it could ever yes, be a totally thing. Yes, totally agree. Totally yeah, agree. I, I, and I've always thought that in every that. every uh, version of the Joker, I, it feel, except for the Jared Leto awful version, I feel like the Joker's a little bit older. Well, I guess Heath Ledger wasn't older than Christian Bale, but I've always felt thought that the uh, character of the Joker was like, I don't know, 10, 15 years older. And so I never really saw, and I've always thought of Batman as being late thirties, early forties. Yeah. I don't know why, but I just don't see the Joker ever besting Batman in a hand to hand. Well, that's fight. not his, that is not his purpose. It's not his style. It's not his, his, his MO is to torture you psychologically. And right. and and use his minions, of course, and whatever, and you know he can certainly hurt you with guns and knives and things, but and but it always just it comes, and I know that the original, you know, some of the original Batman was to kind of show that he is a brilliant detective. I mean, I know that's what DC stands for, is you know detective comics, but he was he was a good detective that was willing to break break some rules and break some laws and break some bone, but it just feels like. The Joker is the smart guy, but Batman wins because he's just able to physically punch his way out of a situation. You know what I'm saying? Like that's just what it feels like, even in this one. It doesn't feel like he bested him. He just mm-hmm. he took the punches and then and then got a couple licks in, threw him out a window, and then they had a conversation, and then in the movie. 
And then they laugh together. And then they laugh together. Like two buddies. Now, here's 40 seconds of really good Mark Hamill dialogue um, about, and this is where he's trying to kind of push. Again, this movie is very similar to The Dark Knight in that the Joker in that movie is trying to prove that everyone is a little mad and all you have to do is give them a little push. And that's what this movie is, is that anyone can go insane on you know, any given bad day is the point. Yeah. And so here's, I, I thought this was actually pretty, pretty good, worded pr- pretty well. But can we live without them? Memories are what our reason is based on. If we deny them, we deny reason itself. Although, what's wrong with that, really? It's not like we're contractually tied down to rationality. There is no sanity clause. So when you find yourself locked onto an unpleasant train of thought, headed for places in your past where the screaming is unavoidable, remember this. There's always madness. You can just step outside and close the door on all those dreadful things that happened. You can lock them away forever. Yeah, I thought that was pretty good. Except that none of his plans work in this one. Well, no. Right? No. I, I, I think there should have been at least one victim that it worked on to make it. I don't know. Not Jim Gordon, but I, I don't know. It just seemed it was a dumb plan. It was a dumb, it was a dumb plan. Mm-hmm. Oh, am I supposed to play that? Um, I, don't, I wasn't ready for that uh, at all, obviously. <laughs> uh, not a great plan. Not a great plan. There you go. Yeah, thanks, Tony Stark. <laughs> yep. <clears throat> All right. Uh, just a couple more here. Um, here's a, a direct. Um, I will say this that I thought. That there, so there's some things I'm going to talk about in a minute that I really did find kind of interesting about this movie. And this here proves that this is in the Christian Bale universe. I swear to God, man, he ain't been around. Ah! Swear to me. There you go. <laughs> yeah. Swear. I mean, Christian Bale says that in Batman Begins, which is such a great line. When he got it is. when he's got uh, fast flask, flask, whatever his name is, fat guy. When he's got him up yeah. in the thing, and he says, "I swear, I don't. I swear to God, I don't know." And he says, "Swear to me." Like, oh, it's such a cool line. Such a cool line. Mm-hmm. Now, this is the this is nine seconds of laughing, and this is the part where Batman and the Joker are both laughing, and then the Joker stops. But the other reason why I captured this clip. It's because when it's just the Batman, it sounds like uh, whatever his name is, Con- Conroy, Conway, whatever his name is. Conroy. Conroy. Yeah. It sounds like he's doing an, an Adam West impersonation. So here you go. It is kind of Adam Westy. It is very mm-hmm. Adam West. I was actually expecting this to look in the trivia and see that Adam West did the laugh or something. But but you can hear it when <laughs> the Joker stops. He stops laughing. So again, I don't we're we're supposed to not know what happens, but I just I don't I find that super unsettling. Again, I I'm not You know, maybe it's just how we are as human beings. But when something is left unfinished, it bothers us. Yeah. And and I know that the the author did that for a reason. Just like they do that in certain movies, just like they did it in the Sopranos, you know, doing something like cutting to black in the middle of mm-hmm. a sentence and that's it. Like people are gonna talk about it. It's gonna be memorable and maybe that's what he was going for, but it didn't land. Didn't land. I, we yep. haven't really talked about the director or any of the other cast and crew on this thing. Sam Liu is the director. He has done such fine things as uh, he's doing something called Batman's Soul of the Dragon. That's this that's this new thing that's coming out. Hmm. Uh, in the 1970s, a missing teacher of martial arts is the subject of a quest by his devoted and brilliant and but disturbed students who include Batman. Uh, it's an animated. It's all you know, animated. 
Um, all of his movies, well, I shouldn't say all, a lot of them seem to be uh, cartoon. It's, you know, hmm. I th- also think it takes a certain director to do cartoon. Yeah, he did Batman, or he did Superman Red Sun, Wonder Woman Bloodlines, Death and the Return of Superman, Justice League versus the Fatal Five. Uh, gosh, he did one, two, three, four, five. He did five movies in 2019 alone. Goodness gracious. Batman Gotham by Gaslight, Batman and Harley Quinn, Teen Titans, The Judas Contract, which I've watched. That's actually pretty good. He did The Killing Joke, Justice League versus The Teen Titans. Uh, Beware the Batman, the TV series, the Green Lantern, the animated series, Thor, Tales of Asgard. I mean, he's this is his life. His oh, life he went to Marvel, year. too. Okay. Yeah, he, yeah, he's done Marvel. Hulk versus uh, Planet Hulk, Superman, Batman, Public Enemies, Godzilla, the series, from 98 to 2001. Uh, he did a Batman versus Dracula. All right. <laughs> Uh, let's see, Max Steel and Roughnecks, the Starship Troopers Chronicles. I actually used to watch that. Um, it was a, I so that was a thing. Yeah, it was a CGI kind of a thing when that was very <laughs> first coming out. Uh, it wasn't bad. It was actually all right. Anyway, uh, yep. the other thing I just I don't I don't remember the the score, the film score. No, and I don't remember hearing the iconic. You know, animated yeah. Batman theme. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, I can, I can, I can picture it in my head or hear it in my head. But yeah, we didn't hear that. That's 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 a little sad. All right, moving on to uh, the only other trope that I wrote was zoom and enhance. We had a really great zoom and enhance uh, uh, trope. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so okay, here we go. And now for some more bad news. Ready? I'm gonna do this uh, pretty quickly. Uh, after the release of Batman: Arkham Knight, Mark Hamill said he would never do another Joker again unless Batman: The Killing Joke was adapted into a film. Hmm. Uh, I mentioned this kind of part earlier. The film has a 28-minute prologue based on the comic Batgirl special number one, and so. That's kind of why they did that. The Joker tells the Batman his joke at the end. Both Batman and the Joker can be seen. Oh, I mentioned this, like the, the ambiguity, so I, I mentioned that. Here's the one thing that I thought was actually kind of cool. This is one of the things I like about it because it went into some detail, and I actually went back and looked at what they're talking about. So when Batman brings up the profile of the Joker while in the Batcave, there are multiple references shown in the pictures. The fourth image on the top row is a reference to the Dark Knight where Heath Ledger's Joker is incarcerated by Gotham PD as seen wearing the Heath Ledger-style green waistcoat while hunched over. The fifth image on the top top row shows a bleeding dead Robin, a reference to the 1988 Batman storyline A Death in the Family, where the Joker kills the second Robin, Jason Todd. Uh, this storyline is told in the DCAU film Batman Under the Red Hood. On the second row, third image, there's a picture of the Joker that looks like a revamp of the cover of the 1940s Batman number one, which is the first appearance of the Joker. Second row image, there's a reference to Tim Burton's Batman where the Joker, Jack Nicholson, is on the TV commercial introducing Smile X Chemical. Brand X. So I... <laughs> So I thought I liked that. I thought that was kind of a neat, like, to kind of a it's kind of a way to show that we're all kind of in the same universe in a way. Yeah, I like that too. I did notice, especially the the Tim Burton. Yeah, um, but it's, it's kind of cool. That is neat. Yep. Uh, okay. Excuse me while I whip this out. Top three Ooh. cartoon movies. Uh, this is. One of one of the first, if not the first, cartoon movie we've done on the podcast is it? Did we do? Didn't we do something like not Snoopy, Goofy's story or something like that? I don't think so. A long time ago, no. Goofy? I don't think so. I'm, I'm typing a Goofy it. movie. No, I would remember doing a Goofy movie. Oh, okay. No, I don't think so. Anyway, what you got there, Andrew? Uh, so I've got. To um, pull up my list, okay. I've got coming in at number three. I have Charlotte's Web. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. That's... 
Uh, and I felt like I was forced to watch it as a child, but I did actually <laughs> like it. And then uh, All Dogs Go to Heaven at number two. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and then number one, we've already mentioned, and of course it is Batman. And this one is actually a good one, and that is Batman Mask of the Phantasm. Yeah, I saw that too. See, for some reason, I thought that was this one too. I, I yeah, so bad. I think I did the same thing. I think I conflated them also. Yeah, yeah. Now that one's actually good. Sure. Or at least it was when I was. And it's in the same know, same um, animation style, right? Yeah. Yeah. See, that's what I thought this was. Absolutely. So I've scrolled back through, looking pretty quickly. I haven't really. Um. Really, whatever. So, I don't see... The closest thing that we have to uh, an animated movie is... In, into the, the Clone Wars? No, Into the... Well, no, Into the Spider-Verse. I mean, there, Clone Wars is also CGI, and so is Spider-Verse, but Spider-Verse has a very distinctive, um, almost 2D style to it, even though I know it's 3D. 3D CGI. So yeah, this is the first 2D cell drawing, even though there was some CGI, you know, like the car was CGI and the truck was and stuff like that. But yeah, this is our first one. Well, that's cool. I uh that's cool. What you got, Sam? Yeah. All right. Um for my number three, I have um Beauty and the Beast. All right. I, I, yes, I'm Disney guy. So, hey, you um, know what the great trivia about Beauty and the Beast is, right? Wasn't it the first uh, animated movie uh, nominated for an Oscar? It was the last. And, and to show cleavage. It was the, the last one, too. It was the last one. The first one, I think, was Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. Yeah, that's but it was, right. That's right. It was the last okay. movie before they created their own animated um, segment in Oscars uh, because we were starting to get movies like Toy Story. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, my number two is The Secret of Nim. Yeah. Love that one. Don Bluth. And it, you talk about freaking you out. Uh-huh. Um, that one's nuts. Um, and I actually, I, I, about maybe 10 years ago, I read the book. Oh. Just out of, the, out of on a whim, I read the book. Yeah. And the movie, it's one of those where the movie's better than the book. Oh, interesting. Yeah, yeah. Um, but my number one, is a movie I could I could start right now and watch until forever is the Emperor's New Groove. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I have I have to put it on there. It yeah. just, literally, if if it's on, I'm gonna watch it. Right? If if <laughs> if I'm thinking about it, I'm gonna watch clips. I I just oh, it's I, such a good movie. I it can't tell you how many movie. times I've actually gone to my boss's office and said I've been turned into a cow. Can I go home? <laughs> <laughs> Pull the lever. Wrong, Wrong lever. lever. Why do we even have that lever? <laughs> I love the Emperor's New Groove. No, I mean, that's, brilliant. Yeah, it's so funny that yep. movie. I have such a f- weird story with that movie. It came out. I yeah. completely missed it. I didn't even like know it existed. And then it was a rainy Saturday while we were living in, you know, in college. And <laughs> I don't know, um, Sarah, were you with me when I watched it? Yeah, like. So Sarah and my wife, she's here. Yeah. And we were dating at the time in college, and um, I'm sitting down on the couch, and I'm like, oh, hey, we had the Disney Channel for some reason or whatever, and it was coming on. And I'm like, I don't even know what this movie is. And she says, how do you not know what this movie is? It's great. I'm like, well, okay, well, watch it. And I watched it, and I freaking loved it. <laughs> and I think she bought me the Blu-ray for uh, on the DVD for like Christmas or a birthday present or something. She's nodding her head in the background. And like, yeah. it's so funny. That movie is so funny. Okay, anyway. Yeah, it is. It's great. It really and it's is. one of those where it, it's a throwaway movie, you would think, in terms of Disney treats it like a throwaway movie. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But but it's got real heart to it, right? I mean, yeah. it's it's not just a, a crazy joke filled ride. It's it's got good message and a good heart and I think it's I think it's brilliant. Yeah, it really is. <laughs> uh oh, let me guess. There's a huge waterfall coming up. Yep. Sharp rocks at the bottom, most likely. Bring it on. <laughs> <laughs> so my number three, yeah, infinitely uh, quotable. By the oh way. yeah, oh, gosh, yeah. Well, I mean, I mean, you're not wrong. First of all, it's like the 14th time that John Goodman has been in a Disney animated film. Yeah. Um, he's done a bunch for some reason. I mean, he's just a great voice. Uh, yeah. 
but also like there's no typical Disney trope. There's no Disney princess. Nope. You know, the the hero is kind of a douche at the beginning and has to <laughs> learn a lesson. Uh, it breaks the fourth wall. I mean, yeah. there's just there's just so much fun with it. So so good. Yeah. So good. So my number so. three actually is Emperor's New Groove. That's my, th- my oh three. three. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, I, I simply did it mostly for nostalgia purposes. My number two, yeah. I did an American Tale, Fievel Goes West. Oh, really? Yeah. That's, not the first one. Not, the first one kind of scares me, even as an adult. The first yeah. one makes, makes me cry. Like, I like I, the, I, the, I can't watch it because it makes me cry. Yeah. Yeah. I like Fievel Goes West. Yeah. The, sec- the first one is kind of dark. We watched it with, as a family. Yeah. We watched both of them. We, my kids watched uh, Fievel Goes West first. Uh, because we own it on DVD, but we didn't own the first one because the mouse of Minsk was would scare me as a child, <laughs> and and the cats are kind of terrifying. I mean, yeah, like that movie is one of the reasons why people in the eighties and nineties thought New York was a terrifying place, um, because yeah. it looked terrifying. And my number one cartoon animated film of all time is The Iron Giant. Yeah, I knew that was yeah. coming. Yeah, that's... I didn't even put that. Out. I was gonna put it on my list, but I was like, "Nah, I'll let Sean have yeah, that." One. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, that's it. Time for yeah. uh, this thing here. Wait, what's supposed to happen? We're gonna rank this thing out of ten real quick. Andrew, five point two. Five point two. I like it. Nice and quick. Sam, I'm gonna do it a four point four eight. I I I wouldn't want to watch it again. For sure. Yeah, I'm just going to give it a straight five. It was fine. The voice acting of Mark Hamill and some of the others bring Mark it up Hamill a little saved bit. it. Yeah. You know, from being below, you know, sub four for me. Yeah. It, I think it's, it's, but. it's fine. It's fine. Um, that's it. So we have just a little bit of time here. So I want to do one new thing and then I'm going to ask you guys what you've been watching because I haven't seen you in a couple weeks. Yeah. So um, I was gifted for Christmas a giant movie poster of movie quotes. 101 classic Dalmatians. movie quotes. Yeah, oh. Dalmatians. Yeah, it's just a bunch of dogs. <laughs> it is black and white, I guess. I guess that's kind of funny. Yeah, there you go. So the funny thing is, is that I had to get it out of... It was in the living room for a couple of days, and then my wife says, hey, there's swear words on your quotes because your son <laughs> just read one. That has the F bomb in it. I'm like, oh, so he learned a new word. And she's like, well, he didn't technically learn a new word. He's uh, heard it before. But dear. yes, he read it for the first time. So it's <laughs> it's hanging on the wall behind my door. So I thought we'd like to play a little game with you guys and the listeners. I'm gonna read you a quote, one through a hundred. Just tonight we'll just do one. Yeah. And you guys can either say it or or we can just let the listeners, you know, either chime in or or not, but they can just play along or at we'll- home. We'll guess next episode, or we'll guess. Oh sure, yeah. And, next week, you guys can just comes. tell me which what yeah. it is, and so and I one hundred percent know that you guys will know this one, and that's yeah. fine. Some of these are going to be easy, and some of these are going to be hard, and some of the quotes are pretty long, and some of them are pretty short. So I'm going to do my let's best. Let's not to just... say short. Let's let's say average. We don't want to make him feel bad. Nah, that's fair. Okay. <laughs> so I'm going to do my best to just read it and not act it. Okay. Okay. So I'm just going to read the quote. Quote, here we go. At some time, we have to find a little a sounder for this. Um, we'll do uh, this. Um, Why not? Okay, there we go. <laughs> um, I, I, mis- I miswrote the right first word. Okay, here we go. Fix it. They may take away our lives. They will never take our freedom. So that's the quote. Uh, yeah, definitely Jurassic Park. Yep. So, oh, wait, we're not supposed to guess, right? Oh, yeah. Gosh, Sam screwed it up. So Dang. there we go. So next week, we'll find out what movie that classic that's line fun. came from. Um, and the last thing I want to do real quick before we get out of here is just say, you guys watched anything? I haven't, like I said, I haven't seen you in a week. You guys had a chance to watch anything fun over break? Uh, to be honest, no. I, I, I did watch, uh, uh, my wife got, for Christmas, the Big Bang Theory series. Nice. And so we've been watching those episodes, but other than that, I, I've, I'm in a drought. Yeah, like I can't. Well, you're I can't playing f- video games now too. Well, yeah, that's probably not. <laughs> <laughs> probably not helping. Well, I mean, between you and your, you're working on your masters. You have two kids. Yeah. You do have a full time job where 
Um, you have still things to do. I mean, you know, it's fine. I yeah. Can't. I have been told that I should watch this show on uh, on Netflix. Uh, Bridger, what is it, Bridgerton or something like that? Yeah. Yeah, I know. What you're uh, yeah, and I haven't got a chance to watch it yet, but I've been told that well, I that should. Like, yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Cool. Lots of nudity, apparently. Oh. oh. Not that I'm you know, into that. I'm not a prude. <laughs> <laughs> Sure. What you got, Sam? Anything? Um, I've finished up. Um, I caught up on uh, his Dark Materials on HBO, which was a lot of fun. Cool. Um, glad I've read the books before watching the show because it. I think it makes it more interesting. Yeah. But um, my family has started watching Star Wars. Oh, cool! Uh-huh. And we we watched episode four and then five. And let me tell you, I had the greatest dad moment of my life. That when during the reveal. Lucy looks at me and she goes, oh, really? <laughs> That's great. That's awesome. I wish I'd, my son would yeah. stop spoiling things and would, would have. Yeah. My, my son knows That's... the ending to Mandalorian season two and uh. hasn't watched one second of Mandalorian because he's not old enough yet, but he knows how it ends because he can't stay off YouTube. Oh, dear. I was kind of annoyed. So I, I in a in a frustration, we're we're currently watching this uh, Korra, Legend of Korra, the Avatar. Yeah, I said, do you mean to go ahead and tell you how that show ends because you clearly don't want to wait and watch it? <laughs> no, I don't want you to tell me how it ends. You sure, I don't mind telling you. Any, anything else you want me to spoil for you? I was frustrated. Now I will say I then had a different moment because we went from episode five to one, and my girls were laughing hysterically at Jar Jar Binks. Yeah. Uh, like totally enjoying that movie because of Jar Jar Binks. I'm like, damn it. Yeah. This is this is it. That's that's exactly what they were going for here. Yeah. So yeah. There you go. The only thing that we watched, and again, my wife's here, so she can correct me if I'm wrong. The only thing we watched was we did Wonder Woman, 1984. Mm-hmm. Uh, my wife made a gagging face. Oh. Uh, it's not good. It's not. Mm. It's not good. The first one's really, really good. I mean, in the in the in the world of of the bad DC films, it's kind of in the middle, you know. Mm. If like Dark Knight is the top and uh, Dark Knight Rises is the bottom for me, <laughs> um, it's, it's you know that I have heard rumors no one's going to do another Batman film. By the way, okay, well, that's, wait, what? We've we, we got to wait for the patent since Batman to be finished. Well, they're they're Batmaning everything now. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, Batman Love Actually. So, yeah. um, Batman... Uh, saves Grinch Christmas. Saves Christmas, yeah. 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 Okay. Anyway, uh, yeah, Wonder Woman 84, it was fine. It was dumb. It was whatever. I mean, she's pretty, and so is Chris Pine. Chris Pine? Chris Pine. Chris, Mr. Forehead. Yeah. There, I mean, it had some funny moments, and Pedro Pascal is in it. You know, the Mandalorian, he's in it. And he plays a really great 1980s TV gold oil kind of guy. I mean, Kristen Wiig is good in it too, but I, there's just so much... I've heard that, that the Cheetah characters should not have even ever been in it. Well, it, it she looks kind of it looks kind of dumb when she goes full Cheetah. It just looks like... Yeah. It looks Does it look like, like a character from Cats? That's what I was exactly about to say. It looks like a character yeah. from Cats. Or if they did like a live version of the Thundercats or something. It looks kind of weird and dumb and... Just doesn't work. They didn't give it a butthole, did they? No, I don't know. <laughs> uh, there's, I just, there's just a lot of stuff that's just kind of dumb, and I, it's, yeah. it's, and it's frustrating, and it's just, and it's simple things. It's real simple stuff, but anyway, it's whatever. If you go, if you have a chance to, have, if you have HBO Max, I mean, go watch it. I guess it's, but it's two and a half hours long. Yeah. Oh, and uh, Andrew, you're my DC guy. Can she fly? Yeah. She, well, in some iterations, yes. Well, she she can certainly glide with style. I'll put it to you that way. Yeah. Or well, she has her, which I've never understood. She has her invisible jet. But <laughs> I've always thought she could fly, so I don't know why she needed it, but whatever. Well, so the invisible <laughs> jet makes an appearance. That's all. Oh, yeah? I guess, can, it, can an invisible jet make an appearance? I don't know. <laughs> well, we wouldn't know if it did. Yeah, it's in the movie. 
And there's a part of the movie that... that <laughs> are, you, are you sure it's in the movie? Yeah, it, no, it's in the movie. They <laughs> Okay, I'm going to... Spo- this is a little spoiler. If you guys don't want to hear anything about it at all, do you guys care? Why? No, it's fine. Go ahead. If listeners, you don't want to hear it, then tune out. We'll see you in a little bit. But like, they have to get from one side of the world to the other quickly. So they, they, they go to the Smithsonian and they steal a jet. And so for some reason, they have these fighter jets that are fully fueled that you can just get into and just take off. So Wonder Woman, she's like, my dad, you know, Zeus um, would be able to hide things in the world I've been working on trying to make it happen. So she does a little magic trick and makes the ship, the airplane vanish. Fine. But here's two of my problems. One, if you, you're, you're making the ship just invisible to eyesight, you're not making it physically disappear. Right? I'm saying like it's still physically there. And they show us that in the movie by it, by the clouds parting around the, the airplane. So wouldn't radar still work? It's still a physical object. You just can't see it. Anyway, that's nitpick number one. <laughs> nitpick number two. They're flying through... Okay, hold on. I had to mute you again. Mute me? Oh, I guess you don't want to hear anything. Anyway, they're flying in a jet going like 30 miles an hour. It's really dumb. Anyway, that's it. I'm done. Um, uh, yeah, that's it. Okay. Uh, that's the show. Wait, what's supposed to happen? Sorry, I didn't mean to hit that. I meant to hit this. Uh, that's our show. This was uh, fun. It was good to have you guys back uh, for 2021. We got some good stuff coming up. Next week, we're going to be doing Moneyball. Um, I'm... I'm I'm kind of in an Aaron Sorkin mood, so we're going to watch Moneyball and listen to his words through the face of Brad Pitt and Jonah Hill. So there you go. Yeah. Yay. It's going to be good. Uh, you, in the meantime, Facebook.com slash Cheap Seat Reviews. Twitter is at Cheap Seat Cast. Our email is Cheap Seat Reviews at gmail.com. If you want to go back and listen to old episodes, which I. You know, you should do that if you really want to. If 2021 is starting off kind of bad for you and you need some funny in your life, then go back and listen to Cheap Seat Reviews. Uh, Libsyn.com. All of our old episodes are there where there's a lot of really funny stuff that happened. And I um, am, and believe it or not, I am, I am very proud of the work that we have done on the show. I think it's good stuff. Um, it would be great if you guys could leave us a review on iTunes. That's a really good way for other people to find us. If we can get some more reviews. We've, it's been a few years since we've had a review on there. It would be great if everyone listening right now could pick up their phone and, and leave us a review. The one on person iTunes. listening. Hey, whatever. One would be great. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, just and, and help help spread the word. It's great. It's um, We do this show for the fun of it, but it would be great if you know more people would listen. Well, anyway. So on behalf of Andrew and Sam and my dog Peanut and my cat and my wife sitting here next to me, this is Sean saying thank you guys so much for listening and we'll see you next week. And Sean, you know you're going to have to end the show. Capiche? <laughs> Capiche. <laughs>